So good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar. My name is Juan García Burgos. I'm head of public and stakeholder engagement, and I think you, most of the ones in the call know me. And it's my pleasure to open this webinar. Um, and the purpose of this webinar, as you know, is to try to introduce a, a pilot study, a new a novel methodology that we would like to uh, test in order to facilitate and incorporate um, patient experience data into medicines regulation, and in particular, on uh, orphan uh, designation and orphan uh, regulation of medicines. Um, as you know, the inclusion of patient experience data is a priority for EU regulators. This has been highlighted in, in, in current strategies, but also in, in more recent work, where we acknowledge uh, the relevance of having uh, data coming directly from patients without any intervention of any uh, any third party, not only physicians, but any third party, and the value that this information has when taking decisions about medicines development, regulation, and even later. Um, however, we are also very much aware that this is not uh, the norm. This is not happening all the time, and that th there are maybe a lot of missed opportunities to uh, ensure that this data is, this data is supporting all the work we do in order to, to ensure that the medicines which reach the market and reach the patients are safe and effective. <clears throat> Therefore, I think I'm very pleased to, to maybe uh, welcome this in, the webinar of this initiative in which uh, we have been working. Uh, it's a project which is led by Eurordis, but in collaboration with the European Medicines Agency, and we are very pleased maybe to to uh, start piloting these methodologies, and hopefully in a few months to be able to demonstrate that there is an added value, and this is really helping the whole uh, system. So uh, this, this uh, methodology is called Collaborare, and the idea is that we would like to identify patient experience data and to validate it, and um, we will be using uh, artificial intelligence based screening method but this will be like the first step and, and, and colleagues will explain because this will be validated by patient organizations and uh, the idea is to define patient reported outcome measures for orphan medicines um, so um, already there was a presentation at the working party of the patients and the healthcare professionals on November 2023, where the whole idea was proposed initially. It was received with uh, much support and the relevance and the potential usefulness of this initiative was highlighted. <coughs> and I think it's, it's, it's very rewarding to see that now we are about to start the project and that uh, maybe we need the collaboration of many organizations and this is the, the reasoning behind this webinar. So, um, it's my pleasure then to introduce maybe the people who have been lately driving and, 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 and pushing for this initiative. Uh, and I will introduce uh, both Julian Isla and Maria Caballer. Uh, I, I can start with Julian. Julian um, is a scientific advisor of the European Dravet Syndrome Federation. I think most of the ones in this call know him. He is the founder of Foundation 29. He's also resource management for artificial intelligence group at Microsoft. And uh, he also contributes to many EMA activities, but I think we need to mention that he has been nominated a member of the COM to represent patient organizations by the European Commission. And we also have Maria Caballer, who has been the co-leader of this initiative and who is an expert of the COMP and regularly participates and contributes actively to the activities of the COMP. And this is another example of it. But uh, she is a patient engagement and therapeutic development director at Eurordis. So thank you very much again, Maria and Julian, for, um, for your uh, work on this initiative. Uh, and I think Without any delay, what I'm going to do is to give the floor to, I think uh, Julian, I understand, will start, uh, to give the presentation of the whole project. Maybe just to mention, and you heard, this webinar is going to be recorded. Uh, potentially, we may be publishing it because it's a way to disseminate the, 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 the information that we would like to deliver today and to use it as a tool whenever organizations approach and are involved in this, or in this, in this project and this pilot. So um, uh, 
Uh, if any problem has anyone has any problem with the recording and the potential publication of this, uh, please let us know. Otherwise, I think you you should be informed that this may be uh, publicly displayed. So, so I think without any further delay, I give the floor then to Julian, and we will have the presentation, Julian and Maria, and then we will we will open for questions from the from the participants, and in order to ensure that all aspects are clear and that this is a useful piece of information for those who approach the project and can be involved in the project. So thank you and Julian, the floor, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much uh, Juan for the for the nice introduction to the to this initiative. Um, thank you so much for the email and New Orleans for you know taking the idea and make the idea real or trying to make the the idea real as much as possible um the thing is uh, i i always remember that moment it's 10 years ago and maria mavris probably remember that moment as well because it's the first time i joined the com as, as uh, external observer at that moment and i have the opportunity to express the voice of the patient in front of a scientific committee and it was a, an important moment for me because i had the opportunity to to, to bring data. At that moment, I didn't have data, but I had the opportunity to be able to collect data and present data to the committee. But for me, uh, this is an important call for, for patients in terms, of, in terms that at some point in your life, probably if you are lucky, you have the opportunity to bring the voice of the patients to, to scientific regulators. And this is an important moment. But the key message is, uh, on this, on my particular example, the question from the EMA was uh, mostly a scientific question. In, the, in, but sometimes the question is more about your needs. The question is about what is important to you. And I want to connect this experience with another experience I have uh, one year later uh, with Elizabeth. I guess it's Elizabeth is joining this call as well because i don't know if elizabeth remember one particular moment when we were in a bus in barcelona and we were discussing about one recent uh, marketing authorization for one drug for for duchenne and and i asked elizabeth what do you think about this drug and elizabeth told me well well we'll see but i guess the most relevant outcome for the same population is not if the patient is able to walk 10 more meters during six minutes. The most important outcome for a patient with uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is the capacity of raising your arms. And I look at Elizabeth saying, raising the arms? Why raising the arms is so important? And Elizabeth told me, well, this is very important because if you are able to raise your arms and you are put, able to put your arms in, in, in close to your keyboard, you are able to use a computer. And if you are able to use a computer, you, you can go to any place in the world. This is much more important than walking 10 more meters in a clinical test. Uh, maybe this is anecdotal, but for me it was like an open eye moment because I realized, oh my God, we are developing drugs using clinical outcomes that maybe they are not so important for patients. Um, and after this initiative, after this moment, and after so many years, the other moment important for this project was one, uh, some months ago, one discussion during the COM, a very long discussion about significant benefit. And we went into lunch and I was talking to Maria saying, oh my God, we are, we are being talking two hours because we don't really know what, important, what is important for the patient with this condition. And the idea of collaborator just pop up at that moment. So uh, thanks, Julian. For, as Julian was mentioning, and sometimes uh, when patients are asked to contribute in some regulatory activities and bringing some different type of data, we, we face some challenges. And 
and mainly, and some of you might have experience directly within your organizations, but also um, also individual patients. So we are lacking in terms of patient experience data, some lack of standards in, in terms of how to capture which data should be captured and how to be collected, but also in, in meeting the regulatory requirements some of the times with the methodologies used. So with this, um, what we wanted to, to do with the collaborator, it was to help patient organizations and to guide on how to support uh, this data collection, but also to, thanks to you, to validate what is um, given in the tool. So why we, uh, sorry, next, uh, Julian. So why we, we develop or why we created this project, and as uh, Julian and Juan just mentioned, Patient experience data is increasingly becoming very relevant for regulators all over the world, but also at the EMA. And once we have this idea, after Julian was mentioning, we were discussing for like, and I don't joke here, like three hours of this, if, the, if for that product would benefit that the specific population or not, then we thought, okay, we, we need to do something. And first, my first initial idea was like, let's survey all patient organizations. And, Ju and Julian was like, well, Maria, this is like too much resources, too much time, IT tools, AI will do that for us. And that's how um, exactly how it come. And Julian in, and the team, like Juanjo and colleagues, in one hour, they, they developed the tool and we will share with you all afterwards. But then, and here also, so the idea came, but I wanted to thank Juan and the team and the EMA because we had the idea, but they were fully supporting our idea and giving us the time, the, their team and the resources to make it happen. And, and it's linked, as uh, Juan was mentioning, on their strategy, but also because there's uh, an impact and there's a, a real need to take this data into regulatory decision making, but also there is a value because we want drugs uh, that faces or that meets uh, patients' uh, preferences and, prefer and patients' needs. So, as I mentioned, we, we have these challenges that I just uh, mentioned in, in terms of capturing data, collecting data, and also the way that now patient experience data is collected for some patient organizations is very burdensome. Some of these are through methodologies like complex questionnaires, surveys, and not all patient organizations have the same resources, the same uh, capacity, training to, to do that the same as they have the time to, to do. So we thought to create a tool that would be easy for everyone and mainly for patient organizations, but that should be very simple, that it would not take time, most of your time that you already have uh, a lot on your on your side, that so would be very simple and hopefully very effective and could be used in, in regulatory decision making. So next slide. So um, the presentation today is not about uh presenting the idea, it's about presenting the tool by, by themselves. So our goal today is to introduce you to the tool. The tool is super simple. The tool is a tool where you can type a particular condition, check if somebody already provide the information about this condition, and if it's not provided, you have the opportunity to do it and contribute. The system, uh, I will I will share my desktop with the real tool in order you can see how this works because it's much more better to see in a real scenario. So this is the tool. You can find the tool in collaborator.app. And the idea is that you have a, a mechanism to log in, in and, and be able to contribute, but also you can use the tool like a, a reader, like a, like a consumer of information. For, for example, if somebody is interested to know about Dravet syndrome, and you you can type here Dravet, you know, and the system is looking into the list of conditions if the, if the condition is listed or not. And if you are typing typing here, you can see the the list of most important elements for a patient point of view. Um, it's not curated. Don't focus on the details, right? Because uh, we still have to kick off the, the 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 process. But on this list and rank it by importance, you can see the list of the most important elements uh, in order to solve for this particular condition. For example, the first one is uh, feeding difficulties uh, and avoiding gastro. And this could be surprising, you know, because for most of the people, the people will say, will say, well, is seizure control, you know. Uh, but this type of, is just an example. I'm not saying this is the first one, but it's an example on how 
AI can suggest something that they are not so obvious for the majority of the people. Uh, um, in the way we are using AI is that AI is not replacing the voice of the patient at all. AI is just the starter. The, the, the initial list is built by AI based on the big knowledge that the AI has, but your work is to use this list, check the list, review the list, and put the final stamp into the list. Because the way we are using AI is not replacing people, it's just to facilitate the start of the process. In order to explain this in a better way, I will put a, a, another condition, a condition that probably we don't know, in order you can see how this works. I don't know if, I don't remember if we already did for Duchenne. Uh, yeah, I, we did it, right? And uh, we need to find another one, another one we, which, which has not been created. Angel, Angel Mann, for example. It's not popping up. Let's wait. West Syndrome, for example, West Syndrome, right? If the condition has not been validated, you have the opportunity to log in. You have to put your email. And when you are putting your email in order to, to check you are real, you are a real person, you have to click in a link, go into your email and click on the link, right? So you have to go here, go here, and you receive a, a mail similar to this one and this one. And the only thing you have to do is click on this link. This is the mechanism we use to we use to know that you are a real person and uh, you because you are the owner of of the of the account. And uh, yeah, the problem is uh, this is a good example it, because I use my own uh, credential. Uh, I am already for Dravet. But, but we can use this example. I have the opportunity to change this list, but this is the list you will see and uh, for your particular condition. And you have this list. This list has been pre-populated by the artificial intelligence. And your work is to review this list. In order to review the list, it's very easy because if you are happy with the, the list of items, you only have to change the order. Changes the order is so quickly, uh, you only have to drag and drop the elements and as you can see here, you know, the system, the list is changing based on your input. And this is a super easy way to change the order because the order matters. The order says the one is the most important for me. The other thing you can, you can do is if you are not really happy with the wording, because remember the wording has been done by, by an AI, um, you can change the wording. For a particular element, you can say managing behavioral issues at home, for example, right? Uh, it's just an example. You click on save and the list is safe. And if you are interested to add a new element, because the AI, you know, is just a facilitator, it's a tool, but it's not 100% accurate all the time, you can add a new element saying reduce. Uh, uh, aggressive behavior, aggressive behavior, for example, and you have the opportunity to add a new one. Uh, what is the, when I'm adding a new one, uh, ah, maybe because the list is limited, I need to, to remove an, another one, example, after. I will delete that one and I add in this one. It looks we have a bug already because it's not being adding here. Okay, we will sort it out. We will sort it out, no problem. We are we, we still have time to sort it. But the idea is that you will be able to add new elements into that list. Okay. I don't know why this, this didn't work. The thing is when you are finishing with this, you are saving saving changes and the information will be safe in the system in a way that when you when somebody is coming back and checking the condition 
they can see the changes. And also, remember, I changed the wording of this, and also I removed the other one. The only thing missing is the, the item I wanted to add, but because of a bug, probably it's not working, but we'll sort it out. And this is how this works. This is a simple, faster, easy way uh, in, and that we are providing to patients in order to, to, to tell us what is important to them. Uh, right now, we have some limitations that uh, Maria will explain because this is the, just the first step. We want to kick off this and check how this is working. For example, we already identified a bug trying to remove one particular condition. And this is the point when, where we need your help. You will need your help in order to test the tool, tell us if this is working, if this is fitting your needs. We will put a mechanism as well in the tool in order to provide feedback. If you identify a bug or something you want to report to us, you can use this small uh, red element right here. And for example, uh, because of the bug, you can say, okay, I don't like the experience. I identify a bug. I can add new elements. And you can make a, a screen capture of the, of, the, of the screen and send it to us. It's a very easy way to report uh, issues to us, right? Uh, the, the bug was a very nice opportunity to show you how this works, you know. Um, yeah, uh, there is a, one question from Nicole. What happens if different people have different ideas from the items? This is a limitation of this first approach. On this first approach, we are asking to patient organizations to find consensus. So, I mean, in this initial, in, initial step, we are asking the patient organizations to identify one person, and this person will have to has to be responsible of making the consensus. I know it's not easy sometimes, you know, because probably there are multiple discussion and multiple things, but this is the first step, okay? If the tool is successful and the methodology is providing value to you, we will explore the possibility of taking feedback from different people from different, uh, in the same organization and make the consensus in the tool. But this has to be a second step, right? We have to go step by step. The first step is, okay, we are able to find value. If we are able to find value, we will improve the methodology step by step. But the question is very good. Uh, it's explained in the, in the presentation, but the question is very good in any way. Let's go back to the to the presentation and this is the tool and um, you can start to use it and the most important thing is uh, start to send feedback to us this is the the demo um the approach of the project is the tool is already working okay you can find bugs or problems report the bugs to us please um, Foundation 29, which is the, pro the organization I founded, is, is pr providing the technical development. We are happy to provide this support at no cost at that moment. And we are running right now a pilot in the next months in order to check the response rate and check if the tool is providing value uh, for you as, as a patient organization. After the pilot, we will review the, the results of the pilot and we will check if we if it if, if makes sense to go into a much more uh, advanced uh, step or and the learnings uh, we are getting saying that this, this was a nice initiative, but it doesn't make sense to maintain in the future. So as Julian was, was mentioning, was showing us through, guiding us through the video on how the tool is used or will be used, we wanted also to have like kind of a, a landscape of the workflow of the tool and also what will be like your role, this role and your different roles as patient organizations. So the idea or the, our, as I presented also in November in PCWP, we, we wanted to, to have this more detailed a webinar with the EMA eligible patient organizations, as some of you represent uh, big uh, patient organizations with um, a lot of members. And actually, that's our what we will be doing once we will open 
the tool for other uh, rare disease. And actually, as, as I mentioned in the start, some of the patient organizations might not be as big as the ones that you represent. So we will error this through its network. We'll identify uh, patient organizations who would be able also to validate the list for, for instance, an ultra rare disease or some other unrepresented diseases. So the idea would be that as you read this, we will contact one of the main, uh, one of the patient organizations for a specific rare disease. And then, um, as Julian showed, and you will have all these info on how to log in and how the way the tool works in the same tool, as Julian was mentioning in, in the in the app of corner of the tool, you have the menu where it explains how it works. But of course, I'm the contact point, whatever you need in order to to log in and go through the tool. So the first step would be, as Julian mentioned, to log in, and then you will uh, write down the the um, the disease that you are representing, and Julian, as Julian mentioned, the AI is only facilitating the the work for you or for us, for everyone, to have this row or draft elements. For now, we have, and I saw a question in the chat, how many questions or elements are included. I think for now we included ten, uh, but uh, this is, as Julian mentioned, this is uh, learning by doing. So you can add your feedback if you think. Then it's not enough. Then it's too much. So we will be improving the tool. It's very easy, and all these changes can be done almost automatically. So all the all the bugs, all the tools, all the improvement that you think it should be done, please share with us. So once you will be um, having your own list for your disease, and for now, as we mentioned, it only will be one representative for one patient organization. And, and this is for now the main limitation, but also because we want to have a, a consensus and a, validate, and a validation of this list by the whole uh, patient group. So you, as William mentions, you can edit, uh, sorry, you can review, rank, and, and validate. And then what is important also is that this list that uh, will, be, will be published will be for public access. So it will be open for everyone that is registered in in the tool, they, everyone will be able to check this list. So from researchers, for, for their patients, uh, regulators, companies, whoever would like to, to check, they can have a look at, at the list. And then you will see, as, as you have seen, when it's validated, and this is also work in progress because we want to make a, maybe something more visual, when it's validated by the patient organization, you you can see, you will see like a tick or something. And when it's not validated, it, it doesn't appear basically. So if you are looking for a disease that it doesn't show the list, is because the patient organization has not yet uh, validated for, for that specific condition. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, next, next slide. So for now, uh, we are... We will start, as I mentioned, with all of you or all of your organizations who are uh, very well structured, and we hope that uh, you will be able to find a representative that can validate um, the list for your condition. And um, what we will be using, or all, all these, um, the idea or the goal of of this list of the list when will be validated is to help for now the committee for fund medicinal products when discussing this potential significant benefit or other elements of their orphan regulations such could be major contribution to patient care. So when discussing something specific for a specific rare disease, we could go and see if uh, it matches with the reality of, of the patient groups. So you here in, in this project, you have a, a big role and, and you are key to make this tool, tool successful. So um, they, as, um, as I mentioned, uh, we will be also contacting you in in another more detailed um, email for for the progress and the next steps. So next slide, please. One of uh, the main limitations that we are being repeating, but I think it's important that it keeps the message that it's only one patient or one individual uh, representative for each organization at this first stage, because this this question has been raised a lot. But we want to make it sure that it's. Um, that it sticks with uh, this presentation that for now only one representative of one condition will be able to to validate and this is the also the role of the patient organization to identify and to also find the consensus in the group uh, it doesn't mean that this individual patient will be the one who will put their preferences or their needs this person has to be responsible to find the consensus in in the group for now as i mentioned also is only for rare diseases 
uh, and let's see uh, if the tool is valuable and it makes uh, sense to also open it for, for other diseases. But it's also true that we have invited all the, all, um, today all the EMA patient, eligible patient organizations, also some colleagues here are not per se rare disease uh, patient organizations, because this tool, you can also add uh, a list uh, like your disease, if, even if it's not rare, and also you can provide your, your preferences. The, the main issue or the main limitation for now is that for regulatory purposes, we are only using it in the context of orphan drugs, but we are very, maybe too, too much or too optimistic, that, but we thought that we think that this will, will be valuable and will be open for, for other diseases uh, um, that are not rare diseases per se. So the methodology, as you've seen, is very easy and can be easily scaled up to, to other to other diseases. So next slide, please. Um, next steps. Well, right now it's time to evaluate the results and the impact of the project. We also have to, to, to test the tool to check if the tool is working. When the most important thing we are looking for is collect feedback uh, from you, from stakeholders, and also from you as well, because you are going to be the users. And also, as Maria explained, our plan is to use this tool with the comp as well. Uh, for the comp, in in during the, the the review of the drug, the most important milestone for the drug is when we are reviewing the maintenance of the orphan drug designation, and and we are also to take an, a proactive role, identify conditions where drug on this stage and we are going to approach the patient organizations with these particular conditions saying guys we have a drug uh, on the particular milestone please we need your feedback so we have two ways proactive reactive in order to collect feedback evaluate the the, the resource of the project identify if we are able to get value expand the tool to rare and not rare in the future by the way, if you are representative of, of a, a non-orphan condition, you you can use the tool in, in any case, right? The, the your feedback will be valuable as well, and we will use this feedback for the future. And in the future, if this is successful, we will uh, we'll look for funding and much more stable platform in order to scale the project in a in a long term, taking the feedback that we are collecting at that point. Just to finish the, the presentation, um, remember the use of the AI is limited to start the project. It's not about replacing your role as a patient or as a human, you know, because the people usually when we are talking about artificial intelligence, they are scared of the use of the AI. Right here, we are using AI just to avoid the fear of putting in front of a blank page with nothing. That's all, right? We're using AI to make sure you have a first list of items to start to work with. Um, the idea also is uh, bring the voice of you into regulatory decisions. Sometimes we are discussing significant benefit. I'm focusing a little bit on significant benefit because the idea comes from this, but you can you can take this uh, from all the regulatory discussions. Sometimes we don't have feedback from patient organizations. Uh, we need to collect, we need to call particular experts, particular patients, but it will be great if this feedback is provided before the need, before the, the we have the drug uh, in, in, at the EMA, right? And also it's very important you express your voice because it's a good message for drug developers, for the industry, for the academia, for the physicians, saying, guys, this is what matters to me. Please work on this. Uh, and initially we are starting with the comp because this is the, the committee where we are. We already explained the idea to the comp. They are very excited about this opportunity, are very willing to try it. And, uh, but definitely the idea can be used in other committees as well. And that's all. Thank you.